Hello everyone, my name is Dominic Kaley and it's a real pleasure to be coming to you from Los Angeles, California from my apartment here. Hopefully everyone's been having a great day wherever you might be. Uh, but today, you know, check it out, I got a special guest with, uh, with me today, Adam Milstein. So Adam is a fabulous violinist and he was, he's a colleague of mine. We actually went to the Coburn School right down the street from us uh, together for uh, a few years and uh, it's a real delight to be able to present uh, this uh, special piece today for you. Adam, uh, welcome. Thank you. It's, uh, it's really great to be here. I'm going to unmask for just one second so everyone can see my face. Um, my name's Adam and I'm uh, so happy to be here today. Thank you so much for joining in. It's such a pleasure to play with Dominic. Um, we're going to be presenting to you today um, a work by the composer Erwin Schulhoff, just a wonderful composer. And this is his violin sonata that was written in 1927. And right now we're getting ready to record it actually next week um, as part of the Zirian Conlin Initiative for Recovered Voices at the Colburn School, which is a really wonderful initiative. And we'll attach something so you can check out the website later on. Um, but this work is in four movements. And Dominic, should we talk about the first two movements of this? Sure. So this violin sonata begins with a uh, very declarative type of music. The violin uh, it really expresses itself and makes its presence known with these opening notes of energy and impetuous, as Schulhoff puts it, impetuous type of character. So um, I, I, I almost feel the pianist, I'm along for the ride as the violin swoops me up in this tornado of energy and, and music. But you know, there's so many different sides to Schulhoff and also so many different sides to uh, this movement where we see music that's lilting. Sorry about that. Uh, we see music that's both lilting, we see music that's uh, sort of searching wistfully. And toward the end, there's this moment where uh, we were really in this meditative type of stratosphere of dream, dreamlike music. Uh, so, uh, and there's a really impressive cadenza actually that Schulhoff writes into the ending of the first movement. It almost looks like a concerto for the violin as uh, yeah, Adam just goes crazy. <laughs> um, and, and the second movement is a little bit different. Uh, it's, it's much more of a meditative type uh, music. We have the piano, my part, that is pulsating with these, these chords that just keep on uh, kind of tolling out like these low bell tones. And it, for me, it feels like a heartbeat. And on top of that, uh, Adam's part is very rhapsodic, very, uh, I would say, it's wonderful because Shulman was actually quite inspired by his, co his, by his own colleagues, Bartok and Kodai, two composers that were uh, having Hungarian heritage. So in this one particularly, I, I, I see the, the language of Hungary really coming out. I don't know if any of you uh, have ever heard the uh, Hungarian person speak, but they have a very forceful and accentuated type rhythmic um, inflection to their speech pattern. And I, I really see that in this second movement. So um, yeah, the piano is just creating this wonderful bed of texture for Adam to explore and, and, and uh, confound and delight the audience over. Uh, but it's probably, the, it's probably, I'd say, the emotional centerpiece of this sonata. As, uh, I think Adam would agree. Yeah, yeah, and then to contrast that, we go into the third movement, which is a sort of crazy burlesque movement, um, where you're going to see a lot of extended technique in the violin, like left-hand pizzicato. So keep an eye out for that. It's very interesting. And it's in a 5-4, which is a very odd time signature to have. And then the final movement um, is another allegro. Um, and you're going to hear tunes from the other movements sort of incorporated into the finale of this piece, which is really wonderful to wrap things up in a crazy kind of folk-like and heavily chromatic ending with a lot of double stop on the violin. So without further ado, and if you want to stick around for a few minutes after the performance, we're going to talk a little bit more about our rehearsal process and sort of what um, we're doing together and uh, playing playing this music. So if you stick around afterwards, we'll talk a bit about that. But without further ado, we'd like to play for you the Schulhoff violin sonata. Yes, indeed. OK. Right. You, you want an A on it? Yeah, take another A. Okay. Thank you. 
excellent. Well, that was the Schulhoff um, Second Violin Sonata uh, performed by Adam and myself. And um, I, I think that we'd love to uh, now just have a little bit of a, you know, more in-depth uh, details about uh, this piece, what it means to us, and sort of the process that we've been having rehearsing this piece. And it's rather, um, you know, Adam just kindly moving uh, these microphones so that you can hear us a little bit better. Um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the process of what we've gone through during this pandemic, what it's been like to rehearse. And, you know, we feel very fortunate to be able to uh, present uh, some chamber music uh, during this pandemic. And but before we move on, I, I just want to say, Pauline, thank you so much for joining us. We, we appreciate your comments. And um, a, 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 as Pauline said, she looks forward to learning more about Schulhoff and the Recovered Voices. So that's what we're here for now. Um, and Adam, can you tell me a bit about like, your first uh, uh, your first introduction to Recovered Voices. Yeah, so my first intro to Recovered Voices was actually um, at Colburn. Um, I was fortunate enough to play a concert with um, my, one of my professors, Scott St. John, uh, at the Thomas Mann House in uh, the Pacific Palisades. And we played a work by Ernst Toch. And it was my first real exposure deeply um, into what the Recovered Voices is doing. And the, the purpose and the mission of Recovered Voices is to amplify and bring along the work of music by composers who were suppressed um, by the Nazis uh, and bringing them really into um, our canon of classical music because these guys really belong alongside the other greats of the 20th century like Prokofiev and Shostakovich, um, what have you. And we really believe strongly that this music um, should be played around the world on the concert stage. So you know, it's something I'm very passionate about, and Dominic is as well. Yes. And uh, we've been working really hard on a lot of music by Schulhoff, who's a favorite composer of, of both of ours. Um, and yeah, so we've had a lot of fun digging into this, uh, this violin sonata in particular. Yes. Um, you know, my, I've always known about recovered voices, uh, you know, being a student at Colburn, but I, I was really, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, the music of Schulhoff really meant a lot to me personally, because I remember you know, all my concerts had been canceled and I was here in my apartment, you know, kind of wondering what, what was the next step. And I remember one afternoon, Adam uh, sent me some music, uh, some piano music of Erwin Schulhoff. Uh, I, I believe it was um, uh, actually his uh, Pitoreskin, mm -hmm. I believe, listening to first. And I was like, how have I never heard this, this music before? And, and then, you know, her, him and I got talking and we got more and more uh, invested into exploring Schulhoff and, and what, he, what his music really means to today. And some of it, you know, really, uh, I would say that Schulhoff's music means so much to today because, you know, if you look at him as a man, he went through so many uh, tribulations and struggles throughout his life, and he always wrote music that um, sometimes reflected that, but he could also write the most beautiful, nostalgic melodies that were com the complete opposite of what was going on in his, his life, actually. The funny thing is that in this piece, this, the violin sonata, some of it might seem ferocious uh, and aggressive and impetuous, but actually, you know, um, Schulhoff was, was not necessarily... Um, always trying to uh, convey these, these sentiments. Sometimes he was just trying to, try to create this wonderful barroom type dance atmosphere where everyone's just leaping about. You know, at the end of the finale, you know, you, you can imagine. I, I think it might be one of the hardest things I've ever heard the violin play. <laughs> it's pretty. You crazy. know, I, I, I mean, you can you can just see this you know, Paganini type violinist in the center of this big, you know, Hungarian type um, square, and everyone's dancing and. and, and wonderful feverish type way and the violin is just going crazy. That's how I imagine this, this ending. And, um, but, you know, um, rehearsing has been re really, really uh, fruitful for both of us to be able to share some chamber music. And um, yeah, so we'll be actually recording this um, next week, Adam. Yeah, next week. So, <clears throat> and we encourage you to really um, check out more of the music of Erwin Schulhoff. He's just a wonderful um, you know, Czech composer and just incredible. And yeah, we really hope you yeah, I'll investigate him more. Yeah, so I mean, you know, Schulhoff, he was born in about 1894, actually. And, and let's take a look one more time at, at, at this man. So, so, so this is this is Schulhoff. Um, you know, unfortunately, there are not that many um, photos of him remaining uh, because, uh, as Adam mentioned, you know, he was a victim of, of the Nazi regime, and in addition to destroying many of his own possessions, that they, they tried to erase him from history, both with, with his photographs. So this is one of the, the rare um, portraits that we have of this. Um, and so, actually, this portrait would have been taken around 1927, um, around the same time as this piece was written. 
And, uh, you know, Schulhoff went through, I'd say, four different phases of, of, of his musical output. At the beginning of his life, he actually studied with Claude Debussy. It, it's funny, when you look at history and you see the intersection uh, of so many of these famous composers, you know, uh, Schulhoff was, you know, uh, born and uh, basically right around the same time as Brahms was, was ending his life. And uh, we see Schulhoff studying with Claude Debussy. We see Dvorak being a mentor to Schulhoff. Uh, we see lots of other composers like Ravel and Shostakovich being huge supporters of Shulhoff throughout his life. And there, 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 is some, there, there is a really interesting program that I saw about the concert where it was a bunch of debuts of performances from Anton Webern, of uh, Abel Bartok, of Zosa Kodai, of Erwin Shulhoff, all in one concert, you know, all of these fledgling young composers uh, presenting their music. By all accounts, this, uh, this concert was featuring some of their more experimental type music, and the audience might have uh, in, in this more rural area, they, they weren't as enthusiastic to not recognize what they were what they were hearing. It was a bit more uh, atonal and contemporary. But nonetheless, it, it's really interesting to look at Schulhoff as as a man that uh, really was struggling to be a composer, but actually made most most of his living as a pianist. Uh, you, you might not be able to tell that because in, in the sonata today, it's uh, so well written for the violin. Well. It's very difficult, of course, very but, difficult, yeah. but, but obviously he, he um, knew something about the violin and how to create just a really unique type of voice to it that I've never heard, actually, in, it, in any other uh, composer uh, in the writing for violin. So, but, but he made his living as a, as a jazz pianist, as a, uh, as a recording pianist, and it's funny, he actually had a comment that uh, if, if you wanted to hear the true music, uh, and how to learn from music. You know, you should go to the bars and the jazz clubs and listen to that kind of uh, music making because he was always so enthusiastic about spont uh, spontaneity, about freedom, about adventuring through peace with uh, awe and wonder, I would say. And that's something that you definitely hear in jazz. And uh, it was a huge influence upon Schulhoff. So, I mean, Adam, I I'm just wondering, like, uh, w you know, when, when you first opened up the Schulhoff violin song, what was it like to look at the music? I mean, yeah, uh, it was it was daunting actually. I mean, it's a very uh, very difficult and demanding piece of music. Um, so it's a sonata, but it's you know technically just as challenging as a standard kind of solo concerto. And uh, you know, generally, you know, with sonatas, um, a lot of times people do use music to perform. But in this case, it's so challenging for the violin. I've actually opted to have it fully memorized so I can really concentrate on what I have to do. I mean, it, Schulhoff loves doing, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of extended technique. It's called where there's like that left-hand pizzicato section, or in the third movement, the burlesque, there's a lot of this up-bow staccato, which is very challenging. And then the final movement, you have all those crazy double stops where I'm playing multiple strings at the same time, and he has really wild intervals happening. So it was a daunting task, but something I really enjoyed um, learning a lot. It's just been so wonderful to explore his music. Yes, I, I mean, I, I know that for me, um, you know, at that ending, every time I hear it, I'm always like, you know, Gosh, like look at that, look at Adam go because uh, you know I mean, he's just kind of uh, you know putting his head down. And it's like a train, you know. I feel like I'm just kind of jumping on and going along for the along for the ride. And and at the very end of the piece, there's that wonderful um, sort of back and forth between the piano and the violin where he goes da 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 da, and, and, and basically we are kind of like almost interrupting each other in, in those last bars, uh, which is. Uh, something that I, I think Shulhoff was always also trying to find the speech of the people and trying to convey uh, convey that. You know, there's actually a few little sections that like I'd love to take a yeah, look sure. at and demonstrate for the audience. Um, because, you know, in addition to all these folk-like elements, there's actually a wonderful section in the first movement um, where actually Shulhoff writes in Italian, um, he wants the music to be like another instrument. He says, quasi flagelletto. A flagelletto, let's take a look at flagelletto. So what is that? That looks a bit like this kind of recorder type instrument. It's like a wooden uh, instrument that makes a kind of a wispy, kind of you know inaccurate type sound. And you know I think Adam's playing some harmonica on his instrument, and on the piano I'm trying to create this really kind of eerie type atmosphere. So let's uh, let's let's just take a look at that section. Um, um, is, is that a good spot? Yeah, yeah. The uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so right there. Great. So um, yeah, pay attention to the ending of this when the music's kind of dis disappearing. Let's, let's have a listen. So. <laughs> So 
So, so that atmosphere, you know, Schulhoff is, is, is expecting us to try and um, imitate the, these types of instruments that he would have heard in his own culture. Um, so I, I find that to be really brilliant. And actually, I would love to actually take a look at um, one other section. Uh, you know, it's funny because all of these endings, actually, of, of this sonata, they, they all kind of involve uh, interruptions, I would say. I mean, take, take the first movement ending. Um, you know, uh, do you want to do, um, you want to start from that uh, last fermata? The, uh, yeah, from, from that, yep, that yep. last fermata? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll notice that um, when Adam thinks he has the last wor word, actually, I do. <laughs> so, so let's just take a listen to that. You know, I, I, I definitely imagine that, you know, here or, um, but you know, what's funny is in the, um, in, in the third movement, uh, uh, you know, the first movement I'd say to Schulhoff, the, the pianist, I always imagine him being in this setting. Uh, he, he actually premiered this piece in, in actually 1929 uh, with the violinist. And uh, basically, I can imagine Schulhoff kind of, you know, being a bit, you know, uh, impetuous and, and elbowing that last note. But then the violin gets the last word in the third movement. You just want to do like the last bar. Yeah, I'll just yeah, yeah. little thing. So Adam does this wonderfully atmospheric type passage, and then the piano uh, kind of scurries about, at, and then this time the violin gets the last word. So all these offbeat type patterns, it, it, it's really brilliant, I would say. And then um, I would actually love to show one more time this, this wonderful interruption. Uh, of kind of arguing voices at the end of the entire piece. Um, perhaps um, maybe, maybe the last three bars? Yep. Maybe yep. there? So you see that we're, we're kind of uh, off, off kilter there. And again, this is really indicative of like a Hungarian type style that um, Bela Bartok and and built in Kodai influenced uh, Schulhoff. So uh, I always feel like Schulhoff captures the spirit of the people and the speech. We talk about music as being a way of talking and a way of speaking, and I see that so prevalent in, in this sonata and all of his music, really. Uh, I mean, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts, Adam? About yeah, that? no, I totally agree. Just, it's, I encourage all of you to check out some more music by Schulhoff, and he had very distinct phases of writing, and um, he writes a lot of really beautiful, strictly jazz-influenced stuff. He has jazz etudes, for example, that are wonderful. Um, I highly recommend listening to his piano concerti are incredible. Um, he has a really wonderful Dada movement where he was, you know, inspired by the Dada art movement, actually. And he was writing musical works in that style that are very absurd. Um, and I also uh, highly recommend checking out his chamber music. His string quartets are phenomenal, like really some of the best writing and his five pieces for string quartet. And, and you guys uh, recorded that. Like yeah, that, we recorded right? his five pieces for string quartet as part of this wonderful um, Schulhoff and Moore initiative that we're doing at Colburn. And uh, we have the string quartet, uh, five pieces for string quartet recorded. We're doing our violin sonata. We had a colleague, Anthony Trianfo, come out and play the flute sonata with Dominic. Dominic recorded two solo piano works. And then we'll be doing the piano concerti by Schulhoff later in the year. And we're going to release those. And then those will be accompanied by uh, excuse me, they'll, they'll be released in addition to these six wonderful um, lectures given by members of the Recovered Voice Recovered Voices program at Colburn. Maestro James Conlin, um, Bob Elias, and Lily Hirsch are going to give these wonderful talks about the music and the mission. So when this is all released, uh, we will, of course, let you know. We encourage you to check all that out because it's really just wonderful stuff. Yeah. So. And, you know, as a fun fact, I, I just want to talk a little bit about Shulhoff now and, and ask you, Adam, uh, what's your favorite movement in this piece? I have to say, I think the... I'm torn between the second and third movements. I love them both. They're so dramatically different. I love the emotional uh, qualities of the second movement and that heartbeat that you talked yes. about are so powerful. And I just love the sort of playfulness and the absurdity of that really short um, virtuosic third movement. So I'm kind of torn between both of them. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say that for me, um, you know, I, I, I think that the second movement's my favorite, even though I'm probably the least active perhaps in the second movement. Um, I, I, I only kind of comment on Adam's part, but for me, the harmonic, you know, flavors and textures that Schulhoff creates are just, just so fantastic, I would say. And, and really, you know, the depth that you know, Schulhoff attains is, is extraordinary, and, and he's not given enough credit for that sometimes. You know, because actually, one of the, one of the problems uh, of his style was that because he incorporated so much of jazz music and, and folk music into his music, 
at the time, some composers thought that he wasn't a serious composer. They, they, they kind of thought maybe that you know, uh, a serious composer is writing more, like, you know, symphonies in the style of Beethoven or Brahms and, and that kind of stuff. And, and while Schumann wrote plenty of, ex I mean, as you can see, the violin sonata, plenty of serious so piano sonatas, violin sonatas, concerti, and, and symphonic works, you know, uh, he, he uh, never quite uh, escaped that stigma of being um, a, a jazzer or, you know, a jazz type guy. Um, and, 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 you know, it, it's not until maybe later on when, uh, you know, many, many years later that people began to look at his music and say, you know what, like, this has as much um, weight and emotional um, depth uh, as really anything of, of the time, in my opinion, if, if not more sometimes. Uh, you know, again, people like Shostakovich, Ravel, um, these, these composers that are a bit more common to, to, to our ears to, to know, I mean, they spoke with the highest regard for Schulhoff and his, his prowess as a composer and performer. So, um, you know, I, I, I definitely am so happy that Adam's been spearheading this campaign to um, you know, really bring this music uh, to the forefront. And I would say in the past year, again, we've been focusing a lot on Schulhoff, but there's so many other composers that we are so excited to share with you uh, in, in, in the upcoming future. And, uh, you know, uh, before we, before we you know, wrap things up, I, I just also wanted to um, get to know you, Adam, a little bit better. I mean, yeah. what's, what, what's your background? I mean, what are you doing here? <laughs> in Los Angeles? Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a current AD student at Colburn. Um, I got my master's there, uh, and I was at the University of Michigan um, prior to going to Colburn for my graduate studies. And I grew up here uh, in Los Angeles, and I actually went to Colburn in the community school for my pre-college um, studies. So it's great to be back in LA and uh, it's been wonderful. I live in the same building as Dominic actually, so rehearsals are very easy and it's been great being able to rehearse this and do all this stuff. And yes. Yeah. yeah, so what you see here, uh, this is where we rehearse. This is exactly the setup. Uh, so you're getting a sort of a glimpse into both our, I guess our streaming space, but also our, our rehearsal space. And I see a question from Pauline. She was asking, um, how did Recovered Voices actually begin? Do you know anything about that? Um, um, well, I have to you know double check on the exact uh, logistics of that, but I know um, that it, it was started by uh, uh, my show James Conlon um, uh, a while ago. I, you know, I have to look exactly into the yeah. details, and I highly recommend um, googling uh, Recovered Voices and also checking out their webpage, the Orel Foundation. That's O R E L um, Foundation, and uh, you can learn a lot there. That's a wonderful database to find out more about not only the Recovered Voices program, but also there's links to wonderful articles and essays and all the different composers and examples of their works. Um, but the Zero Incontinent Initiative actually began at Colburn, I think it was like officially incorporated maybe about 10 years ago. Um, but once again, don't totally quote me <laughs> that, I have to just double check. But please do, uh, do look it up online. There's just a tremendous resource on the ORL Foundation website um, and also on the Colburn website about Recovered Voices where you can learn a lot more about this wonderful initiative. Absolutely. Well, I mean, uh I mean, if anyone has any other uh, you know, questions, please let, let us know. But otherwise, I, I would say that, you know, uh, you've had quite a workout, Adam, you know, in this violin sonata. And uh, I know that I've had a real treat uh, presenting this, this stream to you guys today. And, you know, we just want to thank everyone for their support and for viewing. And if, if, if you're a, a supporter of Recovered Voices, thank you so much for everything that you've done to, to make things like this possible. And to, again, really shed light on important historical moments, important historical people that are undeservedly forgotten or, or neglected. And you know, this is important for so much, this is so important for every, uh, you know, Western music, uh, the, the, the classical canon to progress is to not only uh, feature works of contemporary composers, but also take a look at, again, the music that uh, is deserving of, of recognition and, and, and performance. So, yeah, I, I would say that it's uh, and it's a pleasure always to be streaming on the Impulse Creatives Twitch channel. I, I want to thank all the Impulse Creatives, Alex and Cindy. You guys are great, and we we really appreciate you providing this platform for young artists like ourselves to be able to stream. Um, and yeah, any any last thoughts, Adam? It's just been so wonderful um, playing for you all today, and thank you for joining. And we hope that this exposes you to the music of this great composer. And please, you know. Feel free to reach out to us or you know, look out for more of the works of Erwin Schulhoff and for our recordings that are going to come yeah. out soon. So yeah, yeah it's been great playing for you today. Yeah, stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Uh, this is just a first taste, yes, I would say. Definitely. So uh, with that, uh, we bid you all a, a good uh, afternoon, good night, good morning, wherever you might be. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, until next time, have a great one. Bye-bye.